It was a great journey. I enjoyed it, and uh, we involved lots of experts around the world. There was a, a little detective story associated with uh, an observation that I made a few years ago. It was a, a wasp, and uh, it was quite difficult to get to an ID. It took a couple of years, in fact, to get to an identification on that wasp. And it turned out to be um, a, a wasp in the uh, Eumenidae, uh, a wasp called um, uh, Eudinerus aspera. And um, it, we went down several blind alleys to try and get to that uh, identification. But in the end, it was identified by Marco Sellis who was a researcher at uh, Rome University. Um, so he was able to identify it. And then uh, a, a New York researcher, uh, Brian Dagley, uh, found the original paper that identified it and was able to confirm the ID. So eventually, after two years, got to the identification on that uh, wasp. And it was a great journey. I enjoyed it, and uh, we involved lots of experts around the world. First, it's an endless source of scientific uh, discovery, and it complements gaps in our specimen data, our baseline, and it really gives us insight into the current conservation status of uh, many species that we otherwise wouldn't have. And uh, furthermore, I wish to help uh, people, especially in areas that lack local or regional expertise or collections or field guides to identify their, uh, certainly their bees and wasps. And I go to great lengths to try to identify everything from areas like Africa, Asia, the Middle East, the Neotropics, and the more remote parts of North America, such as the Arctic and also uh, other places that lack a lot of existing baseline data. Uh, most people, including me, don't have access to comprehensive specimen collections from all over the world. And so iNaturalist uh, gives us a chance to engage with the entire scope of species. In my case, this includes Australia, where I haven't had a chance to study many specimens and we're able to find a lot of the first live photos of very obscure species that have been only known, if at all, from uh, specimen photos. For identification purposes, um, it can look uh, very different due to discoloration after the insects die, or in the case of bees, the hairs can get matted down, and also their, their posture, also the angles depicted uh, may be different. The species interactions are also important because bees are usually found on flowers, or on nest substrates, and either way, it's really useful to see them in situ uh, doing what they do, and that can actually help with identification. So there are large numbers of bees that are very hard to identify visually, but when you have the host plant as a clue, which you very often do on iNaturalist, this can tell you what species you're likely to be finding. Not just me, but a large number of people who have no access to uh, studying a fauna through specimens are able to develop a considerable amount of expertise uh, by being able to review very large numbers of images. I find it very exciting. It's driven me to try to improve my photographic skills because that's a key thing. And I've also uh, found the need to improve my entomology skills. So I'm studying for a degree. Um, I've signed up for a degree with um, Nebraska Lincoln University. So it's been a driver for me to do uh, a lot of learning, and I think that's a wonderful thing. And each one of us can go out there and be part, part of this uh, new revolution that's going on in uh, creating this digital record of our insect species.